What's up YouTube, it's Fitzbro, and welcome to the patch note review for Age of Empires 4 Season 4, dropping next week on February the 16th. Now you saw my extensive review of the pup just about a month ago, and these notes are likely going to feature a lot of similar things, but they often make changes between the pup and what actually gets released on the live branch, so we're going to do a full review, bottom to top, of what's coming to you this patch, and see what changes there might be, which you'll want to know if you're hitting the ladder now if you enjoy my age of empires 4 content make sure you subscribe down below we just recently hit a new milestone 12,000 subscribers to the channel so thank you so much for joining me i'll be doing some more casted games grinds to conqueror 3 funny stuff all kinds of stuff so let's get into these patch notes and see what we have in store you can see that this is the first patch actually that they've included a little video in the patch notes i've had running here in the background you can watch it on your own it's about a minute but they're basically showing the biggest thing you're gonna see in this is this kind of new biome they're adding uh, the, the enchanted grove it makes everything have this kind of purple look to it and it looks cool at a glance i kind of think it might make it more difficult to see what's going on but We'll play around with it. It looks like it could be fun nonetheless. Now, if you're wondering, Fitz, why have you not been uploading a ton of videos lately? If you can tell by my awesomely sexy voice right now, I've got a cold I've been getting over for the last week, and there hasn't been a whole lot of new content for the game and kind of waiting for this new season to come out and some cool new stuff coming up with Company Heroes launching soon, as well as some updates for doing Spice Wars and other stuff. So been lots of strategy goodness going on. Okay, season four, Enchanted Grove. So this will be coming out on February the 16th, so we're just one week out from that. Uh, optimizing strategy on three new maps uh, then they're talking about the nomad game mode which is going to be technically new officially to the game the improved landmarks they've rebounced landmarks and there's going to be some changes in this from what you saw in the pup some small ones and more you'll get to explore the enchanted grove biome as we round out this update with the season of events rewards ranks as well quality of life okay so these are the major highlights you can expect in this patch okay so that's gonna be that new biome uh, the new team uh, season ranked season or for 1v1 and team the new maps four lakes continental and marshland the nomad game mode is now official mod browser update i'm excited for that ui improvements landmark reworks art of war updates and a new cheat code new ways to cheat okay let's see what we got enchanted grove i like this little picture this is probably gonna be in the thumbnail you saw to check out this video because this is pretty cool give me some major harry potter vibes i don't know about you guys i want to know how much this uh was that uh, an elk i want to know how much bounty that's worth for the roost but give me your prediction down below let me, <laughs> let me know what you think okay february 16th through march 29th is going to be this event it looks like there's some new portraits some cool stuff like that i want to know when i can get a golden camel uh, monument i just there's a golden elephant we got a, a golden moose or elk here i want a definitely not a moose i wanted a, a camel okay you guys can read about all those fun awards i'm not here for the pixel points well we like yellow look at that thing yeah that's gonna be worth like a lot of bounty purple trees <laughs> wow okay there we go rank season four uh so there you go there's what the rewards are going to look like for season four looks like you're going to get a throne it appears to be the main statue you can get there for your 1v1 that'll be the throne we'll be sitting on there look at that that i always feel like the diamond tiers sometimes look cooler look at that thing it looks awesome no, the bronze one kind of looks cool, too. It's pretty neat. Excellent job with this artwork. Okay, the map pools. This has been a hot topic. I've been begging for more rotation of maps because this is the number one thing I think could really help keep things fresh on a regular basis. Let's see what they have to say. I'm going to keep things fresh. Wow, they just <laughs> stole the words. I didn't read that yet. <laughs> with every new season, and season four is no exception. We're always aiming to include new maps a short while after they're added into the game and mix in older maps while they haven't been in rotation. To see which maps you like and know which tend to be popular, we're reading the feedback, data, etc. So let us know. Learn more about the new maps, read on below. Dang it, I was kind of hopeful they were gonna say like, we're gonna be rotating maps weekly or bi-weekly or every vote or something. It wouldn't it be cool to just have a little bit faster rotation here okay so there's the maps we're gonna see for season one ranked four dry arabia prairie lipany ancient spires 
Wetlands. Elise's all tight. Put it Ah. Okay. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything. Water holes. I don't know much about that one. Okay. So you have to choose your three bands, guys. Here you have it. Let's see. We're going to ban that. Although, new Boulder Bay isn't terrible. All tie triggered. At least French Pass isn't on here. There's my two. I don't know. I don't know much about Waterhole. Okay. There it is. That's, that's, our, that's our map pool. Enjoy it for the next next quarter. <laughs> Team ranked map pool. There you have it. Dry Arabia, Liberty, Hideout, High View Mountain, Clearing, Hill and Dale, Mongolian Heights, Baltic, and Nagari. Okay. Sound off. Let me know what you think about this ranked map pool for season four. Let me know down below. Build spotlight new maps. Three new maps, which you can play on four lakes. Okay. So there's four lakes. It's got basically, uh, it's like the four lakes you thought you knew, but they added islands in the corners, right? With the relics and sacred sites and stuff like that. Continental, which is kind of looks like this. It's got islands in the corner, uh, surrounded by water on all edges. And then you've got your marshland, which is a swampy like map. So there's going to be the three new maps. Now, are those even on there? Yeah, they, they seem to not add the new maps into the map pool. So maybe it's like they want to learn about them first. But like, oh, frankly, I would rather just play on these maps for like <laughs> first rather than have all time back in here. <laughs> OK, OK, so there we go. That's our maps. New game mode. It's not really a new game mode. Everyone knows what Nomad is, right? Uh, but now it's going to be official game mode. You can queue up four. So scattered villagers to begin uh, as you rise throughout the ages. And then you quickly build your town center somewhere. So that, that's going to be a nice new addition to the game uh, officially now. Tells you how to choose that mode. I like these little gifts they've... Uh, I don't know if it's a small, small videos, whatever. They've included for how to do it. It's pretty cool. Okay, so showing you how to set up the Nomad. Start conditions. Yeah, we already know about that. Okay. Mod browser update. So I'm going to scan this real quick. Yeah. So I'm pretty much what we're seeing here is you guys know how like modern web browsing looks, right? Where you got things with if there's a big list. We have pagination that you're able to search for terms and stuff like that. That's basically what all this is saying. They're making it so you can search for mods. Starring is going to affect it. It's not just going to be a giant list of good luck to find mods. That's what's going on. So uh, I'm glad they've joined us in 2023. It'll be a nice quality of life update here for the mod browser. Minimap zooming. Now, this is going to be interesting because this wasn't didn't work in the caster mode. I noticed in the pup. You can now change the size of the minimap via the minimap zoom level, which I think is amazing. Love this feature. Uh, I am disappointed though. It doesn't mi it doesn't mention it here, and I'll have to double check when this comes out. But this is a feature I would love to have for my caster games. That they appear to have they've added it to regular, but you, you can't change the map size in casted games, which is a big opportunity loss. Um, but yeah, you could change uh, the size of your minimap HUD. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Improved unit HUD. So now it is going to be easier to see the stats of your units. You can kind of see a representation here. I'm not going to bore you with all the text. Instead of having to like hover over to see the inside menus, this stuff's displayed uh, right away. You can see the stats here that you'll see in the panel showing the speed of the units, their armor, their 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 basics, attacks, and stuff like that. So this is a nice improvement for the game. Uh, kind of more in line with the other Age of Empire games in the series. So really enjoying this uh, UI change. Uh, instead of doing duplicate weapons, they now do like times three instead of showing it three times. It's probably how it should have been in the first place, but... Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Apparently, there's a few bugs around it. There'll be uh, be working out. Okay, garrison and garrison improvements. Um, you can now see the stats of the building while you have units garrisoned inside it, which is great. Before you couldn't do that, so I, I kind of felt like a bug, but it seems like they fixed it. So that, that'll be nice. Improved multiplayer team UI. I like to see team members displayed in a group together. I don't understand who's on what team. We've changed this to team members clearly together in the gameplay HUD to improve quick legibility. See this change in the UI area, such as the post-match summary. Okay, so they grouped them together, so you know who's actually on your team in the game. Tribute changes. Yes, you can now hold down the shift key or control. Instead of just clicking it one billion times when you want to tribute, it looks like shift will do times five and control will do times ten. So that's a nice little uh, quality of life change for the tributing. 
landmark reworks okay so there's been some big changes okay there's nothing new they've missed there um, but they're going to talk about each of them under the unique the civ specifics so we'll get to the civ specifics here in a moment and you'll see all the landmark changes most excited about the absent art of war updates so they looks like they kind of gave some quality of life changes to the ottoman uh war, art of war cha changes uh so that the getting gold is harder to, uh, to do um so i've long to get easier how long a few people managed to make it with the okay so enemy stone walls are now invulnerable and enemy waves continue to scale up so it's going to be harder if you're trying to do these art of war updates or uh, art of war challenges for the ottoman okay um, a new cheat code, the newly added cheat minimally minimal hides all UI perfect for sc screenshots, gifts of villager selfies, whatever you want to capture. Good for content creators like me. There you go. Sweet. Okay. Gameplay. AI changes. AI had several improvements to how it handles its economy as well as military and naval strategies. Uh... When playing now hold on a second so I'm, I'm skimming this because I think they might not have gone forward with the AI the cheating AI stuff I think it might have been reverted huh I thought that'd be in a big blue box interesting Okay, so I'll have to do some more digging on that one. I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly what was in the pup uh, that we compare side by side, but I think they might have uh, rolled back some of the AI changes. Hardest AI would be reverted is what, what I'm kind of seeing reading in some of my Discord here. Okay, uh, map changes. Excuse me. We're changing the name of the Mediterranean to Baltic, so just a name change there because there's a Mediterranean biome, so they've changed the name. Maps are now alphabetically ordered. Nice. Biomes alphabetical. Cool. Quality of life. Cliffs should not generate at corners. Hills should not generate near shore. Carcasses will no longer drop through bridges. Okay. Map specific. So it looks like they made some uh, tweaks to these these maps. Prairie. Looks like they're be slightly further apart on Prairie. I Me mean, mountain clearing. Not gonna be seeing that ranked anyways. They did thin out the trees some, which has uh, been a nice change of this. Double villager mod now supports Ottomans and Malians. So I guess it didn't before. Okay, there you go. Balance and bug fixes. So yeah, this is a pretty big change. Your units will no longer keep gathering after you're eliminated from the game, particularly for those nomad games you might play with people with like eight players where the villagers will just keep like I like mining out the gold or stone that perhaps you wanted to take the resource by eliminating them that no longer will continue happening um fix issue with ensure right click drag only occurs on right click fix a bug to ensure fishing boats contribute to the economic count okay fix of a rent redownloading subscribe mods ah oh, thank you destroyed landmarks can be repaired okay in the ottoman war, art of war Okay, so a bunch of little things I'm seeing here. Um, play again, but another pet. Caster mode, stolen sheep, no longer count as conversion. Yeah, it looks like a, a bunch of little fixes uh, is what I'm seeing here. Um, balance and gameplay changes for all civilizations. Okay. Fix a bug where melee units couldn't attack unbroken wall segments. Fix a bug where pa placing a palace gate sometimes created a gap in the wall. Oh man, that bug drives me crazy. Really happy to hear that. Fix a bug where landmarks could remain standing if destroyed while under construction. Fixed fishing ships temporarily stopped when they reordered to garrison any dock. Influence-based effects such as the Abbasid, uh, House of Wisdom, and HRE repair influence can now only be extended. Yeah, this is a big thing with fully constructed buildings. You can't... Before, you could kind of cheat and put the, the foundations and get that you know, uh, Golden Age or the emergency repairs. It's got to be fully built. Fixed an issue where units sometimes spawn on the wrong side of the unit production building, aka the town center. <laughs> Relics will now stay on top of bridges, okay, when dropped. 
Relics spawn on the nearest land after being lost in the ocean on a transport. Change the event cycling behavior to now only focus on attack notifications. Elite army tactics, heavy maces and two-handed weapons, extra damage now properly apply to charge and spear wall weapons. Okay. Uh, this will be interesting to see. This is a proposal your idle units will find a better job finding units to attack. So anytime they say something like this, I have to watch to see, like, does this mean that my military is going to run out of where I expect them to be now and start attacking a unit that I didn't want them to attack? We'll have to kind of see how it is, but hopefully it should help them find uh, enemy villagers, it sounds like, when you're, like, raiding. But uh, instead of, like, attacking the farm. But we'll see, I guess, how that kind of plays out. But you guys know what I mean. Like, you got to keep your eye on something like that. Okay, unload garrison building can be rebound. Hockey. Filters do not automatically gather from the farm or nearby resources after repairing a farm or resource drop off building. Reverted the change to boar retaliation behavior with feedback from the pup. The boar no longer only chases the attacking unit and will instead target the closest unit. Okay, people were worried about this boar change. It sounds like they're not actually going to go forward with it. Okay, so listen to the feedback. Pretty cool. What more could you want, guys? What more can you want? Developers, listen to what you want, what you want in the game. That's pretty cool. That's why it's important to give that feedback. Uh, fishing boat gathering rates. So essentially they're nerfing uh, fishing boat gather rates and they're increasing the shore fish gather rates. So they're trying to lessen the impact of deep fishing, uh, increase the shore gather rates to make them uh, more effective in general uh, for boats as well as... Oh yeah, okay. So it helps you with your boats using the shore fish as well as creating options around defensive tech-based plays. Okay. So interesting change to your... Uh, fishing walls so walls are getting more expensive and losing HP palisade and uh, the stone walls Stone walls aren't more expensive but they do lose 500 HP so uh, this is a pretty big hit to walls across the board so uh, yeah, I, I look at this as like yep that's definitely a deli nerf right the palisade wall spammer <laughs> okay so they're looking to try to make them a little bit less cost effective so we'll see how that feels with the change to wall balance that's for sure trade balance adjustments <sighs> this is new this was not in the pub guys reduce gold generated by trade by 10 percent that's massive guys that is a nerf to trade that was not in the pub i've been saying we need something to happen trade glad to see they're doing something here when comparing gold generation from traders versus builders we found that traders are more effective, so we reduced it. Could create a more compelling choice between the two economic units. We'll continue to refine trader gold generation rates in future updates. Okay, sound off, guys. Is this is this like a, a dagger in the hearts of the Malian traders out there, or is it just going to bring them in line? Mongols been getting away with trade pretty crazy lately. This is going to be a big change. Excited to see it in season four. One more week. Monks can now only heal at 50% speed when their target is in combat. This is a big nerf to Delhi, guys. They're the ones that use those healers the most, especially when they don't really have a big answer to, to like, man arms in the second age, right? Uh, so 50% speed when he healing units in combat. Uh, villager format formation catch-up speed reduced, so they won't just, like, yeet around the side trying to uh, avoid raids. The raids will be even more effective against villagers. I kind of like the micro that came out of this interaction, but looks like it's going away. You can't really pull, pull trick your villagers around. Fixed issue where the secondary UI panel isn't accessible. Okay. Uh, clearing the selection. Okay, looks like a bunch of little bug fixes here. Uh, gliding of spam, rare case structures, stop firing at visible targets. Yeah, a bunch of, bunch of little changes here. Okay, but the biggest thing I see, trade balance adjustments. And this monk change, and then that villager catch up. Those are there's some pretty pretty massive changes. Okay, let's keep moving on. Siege updates. We're moving right along. A series of updates have been made to siege units. Siege units and tech unique to a sieve are covered in sieve specific changes. Okay, field constructed siege units no longer get stuck in berry bushes. Good to hear. They can now roll over berries. <laughs> bombard. Okay, bombard wood cost is cheaper. Same thing for the great bombard. It looks like for like, the cannon and Rebaldequin, they looks like they reduce wood across the board. It's because the units are expensive and die pretty easily, so they've made them cheaper overall to kind of encourage you 
Because it kind of felt like, oh, I'm going to spend all these resources and it might just instantly die. So it's a little cheaper now to get these units. Battering Rams have got some love. I'm excited for this stuff. Uh, Siege Workshops can now produce Battering Rams for all sieves. Uh, and there's a new tech, the Lightweight Beams, which is available in Age 4. And it increases their attack speed by 40% and their field construction time decreases by 50%. So this is fun. Going to see some Ram shenanigans going on. I've got a Ram emote over on Twitch, so I hope to see you guys spamming it when, when it starts happening. But uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, fix a bug where CGS could get stuck in their unpacking animation if the target was too close. Okay, so change the siege. We've got Rams stonks going up. Bombards getting a little discount. A little sale, a little spring sale. It's not spring. I guess it's not spring yet. Almost spring. Civ specific changes okay guys buckle up the abbasid dynasty this is my favorite one we wanted the initial wing choices of the house of wisdom to align more closely with high level strats military wing for rushing culture wing for teching and trade economic wings for booming these changes are aimed at increasing diversity of play styles for the abbasid so get ready here we go house of wisdom landmark it is now a home market destination that could be traded with kind of a cool little thing Trade wing uh, spawns three traders once construction is complete. So, boom, instantly get three traders. Not a massive value, but it could kickstart could kick, kick your trade. That just got nerfed by 10%. Military wing spawns units on the, based on the age you complete it. So, if you complete the military wing in age two, you get two spearmen uh, and one archer. If you complete it, you make military wing in age three, you get two camel riders. And if you make the military wing in H4, you get three hand cannoneers. I've been enjoying doing a culture wing into military wing or economic wing into military wing. Uh, just because uh, getting these camels right when you hit the next age, pretty cool. Now, wait till we get the culture. Wing. I don't, oh, I'm going to jump the gun. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, camel rider shields have moved to the stable, so you can get that tech there now. And composite bows have been moved to the wing uh, in the castle age. So you can get compost, co composite bows earlier and you can get those shields uh, research somewhere other than in your house of wisdom uh, also some changes in their cost okay economic wing now this has changed quite a bit so what you knew about abzid you better pay attention the the fertile crescent technology has taken the place of fresh food stuffs in the house of wisdom okay so fresh food stuffs now is located in your town center now to get that that means you have to not train a villager right because you're going to train Get, get fresh food stuffs now and it also only gives you a 35 percent discount instead of the 50 percent discount it used to give you so that's in your town center now you gotta decide when you want to get that and you know you technically are losing a villager while you're training that and then this fertile crescent tech costs 25 food 75 gold reduces the wood and stone costs of economic buildings and houses by 25 percent so that includes your town center your houses your mills your farms all that's going to be cheaper after you get that tech so a pretty cool one uh particularly if you're doing town center boom Get that? Your town center is going to be 25% off. Not a bad thing. So economic wing, some major changes there for the absent dynasty. The culture wing. Oh my gosh, my kitty cat's crying. Hold on. Come on. Come on. The boo's crying at the door and then I open the door and she's like, just stares at me. Okay. Uh, the culture wing. So I like going culture wing, fast castle in the military wing because check this out preservation of knowledge uh it reduces uh it it, it, it reduces the cost of 20 percent, but the reduction now applies to age up costs so you can make your castle age up cheaper pretty cool pretty cool so that's a new thing and the research time is faster again 30 seconds so you can make your you can get this going in the h2 get this tech it's gonna be cheaper to age up to the castle age nice little fast castle and then you pop out your camels with that military wing or something right lots of fun strats here for the absolute dynasty it's gonna be fun to see what players come up with um fix some bugs fix fix some uh, caster ui looks like for that and they've renamed uh the monk uh, conversion tech so there you go, Abyssid Dynasty changes. Sound off below, Abyssid players. What do you think? Happy about it? I'm very excited. You guys know I've played a ton of Abyssid, and I'll be sure to be bringing you some guides that I come up with, and I'm going to be watching the pros see what they are conjuring up and bringing those strategies to you. Naval. Wait, is this for Abyssid specifically? Yeah. Okay. Teak mass naval tech cost decreased. Research time decreased. 
Okay, so yeah, I, I don't even remember which tech this is, but one of their one of their uh, naval upgrades is, it's got a little cheaper. Teak mass. I don't know if that's a speed upgrade. Maybe I don't know. Who cares? Somebody will figure it out. Tell me in the comments. Chinese astronomical clock tower landmark can now produce the clock tower battering rams with bonus health. Oh boy, I'm I'm scared just thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed a bug where granaries wouldn't generate taxes when techs were researched there. Okay. Song Dynasty villagers production speed bonus reduced. Oh boy. Nerfed a Song Dynasty for the Chinese. Ozzy Drongo is going to be crying. Oh no. Nest of Bees will finish its current volley if its target dies or moves out of range. Previously, it would stop firing. Okay. That's it for China. So pretty much a nerf for villagers song dynasty that's a pretty big one it's a pretty big one and the battering rams uh are going to you can make this a clock tower no changes to zugnu anything like that but uh there you go that's our china changes short and sweet delhi sultanate okay they've got some nice changes i'm gonna play and be playing some delhi now i'm gonna be curious i felt like delhi might have been overperforming a li little bit just a little bit in the pup so we'll see if they actually did all the changes or changed some of the rates. We might not notice if they don't mention it, what it was in the pup. But, uh, okay, compound defender. So now, essentially, they've moved all these techs uh, into the compound of the defender. So you can get slow burning defenses, court, court architects of boiling oil, and village fortress. You can research all this stuff in the compound defender. Couldn't do this before. And you can research it pretty fast. I mean, reduced from five minutes to three minutes and 45 seconds. Wow. The, uh, I think that's what it was in the pup, if I'm not mistaken. So this really allows you to do some village fortress boom strategies because now you no longer have to try to research on a keep that maybe you built out in the middle of the field. That's not by a mosque, right? Um, so pretty big thing. Some good flexibility with that. House of Learning. Reinforced foundations. <laughs> I haven't really used this with much effect when I was trying to on the pup. It allows villagers to garrison in houses and fire arrows, and the houses get 50% HP. It's probably a nice little passive thing. Personally, I'm probably going to be going for the compound defender in most scenarios, just because like this stuff, especially this village fortress, like this is so strong. Um, but if you do the house learning, you could get that. Tranquil venue uh, increases the healing from one to two. Uh, per second the lookout towers tech uh, now adds plus one weapon range to outposts and hardy rations tech moved from imperial to castle age so it's kind of like your houses you can get in you can get this eco tech earlier but i don't know i think i like the compound defender just as my initial reaction the saw academy this is the imperial age acts as a madrasa and by madrasa is an expensive building so that's kind of cool and food generation increased by 20 percent so there's a little change to that that's gonna be more food used to be based off of uh i think techs it used to be based off each tech you'd researched so now just food generation boom 20 percent across the board palace of the sultan now trains a new unit the sultan's elite tower elephant this bad boy's got a hand can here i've got him on my youtube short go look at the youtube short i've got the, the the new elephant versus the new english units it's pretty cool go check that out uh a mounted elephant with two hand can here riders while activated the palace of the sultan would train an elephant every 200 seconds you can garrison scholars just like before so some fun changes for delhi i'm excited obviously if you're a big deli main you're probably crying out because the healing nerf that's pretty massive especially if you got like some all-in man and arm strategies against the h2 it's gonna be hard to deal with but if you get up to the castle age jelly could be pretty strong and of course could kind of depend on some of these maps and where the sacred sites end up oh this is new mosque garrison slot garrison slot increased from three to five that's this is massive. This is pretty big. Deal with faith. Now acts as a as a musk. Oh, do you even need a? Do you even need to train? I guess you will still get a mosque so you can get the text, but you can pretty much you have two mosques right out of the gate. Essentially, when you hit the second age. Bye bye, uh, uh, Tower of Victory. I'm going for this. This is going to change Delhi quite a bit. Wow. You could probably get. Oh, man. I'm excited about that. I mean, it only matters once you hit three, but now you don't have to build that second mosque. I don't know. That's pretty cool. This is fun. I'm excited. You could even have some crazy strategy where you don't build a mosque, I'm sure, in the Dark Age. But 
Oh boy. Oh boy, that's fun. Let me know what you think about this. Villager Fortress Tech. Research time increased. Okay. So that was what I was talking about for the pup that was so strong. You could get Village Fortress so quickly. They did make it a little longer. So about like a minute and 15 longer, it looks like, to get the tech. That's still ain't too bad. That ain't too just keep up on your on your on your uh you know your your scholar production and it won't be too bad. Fixed lookout tower tech not affecting all outposts. Zeal technology as a golden glow to affected units. Buff no longer stacks. Uh, and apparently there's a bug with it. Okay, the war elephant. Cost reduced. Yeah, so the war elephant is going to be a lot more manageable. 400 food, 350 gold. So it's cheaper. HP is reduced, but the armor has been increased. The tusk damage has been increased. And the spear get bonus damage uh, against it. So uh, give or take a little bit less HP. But it's going to be a little cheaper. It, you actually can manage to make these. I've seen people using these war, element, uh, war elephants. Remember that in in uh, battle healing those have been nerfed. So if you're relying on that to keep your elephants alive... Uh, you know, it's going to be, be challenging. But if you can get a get a good advantage going, elephants can really turn the tide. Um, okay, the tower elephants. Across the board, elephants get more damage versus buildings. Armored beasts uh, grants more elephants uh, plus four ranged armor in addition to their uh, health points. So Siege Elephants has been renamed to Howdas. Hello, AOE3. In addition to equipping tower elephants with crossbows, grants them additional HP and plus four ranged armor. So, some big changes to... Uh, to elephants coming our way. Always love that. Fixed a bug where elite tower offense and regular tower offense were both selected with a double click. I think I might have reported that bug. Yeah, that's nice. Cost reduced from 150 to 130. For scholars? <sighs> oh, they made scholars cheaper and the Dome of Faith is a boss. As the in combat healing nerf hits daily, we want to compensate them. So here's what I wonder. Have they, they've given some little buffs to Delhi because they've nerfed the healing. Is it going to be a net buff for Delhi or a net nerf? Or to be determined. Let me know down in the comments, YouTube. This is going to be quite interesting to watch. I got to pull up some slimy games the second this launches. We're going to be watching Elephant Cam every day. Okay, naval. 50% extra HP on fishing ships. Manuscript trade production speed bonus per scholar increased from 20 to 30%. And the fixed issue with fishing boats would not benefit from rage, but without a damage. Okay, there you go. The fishing boats get more HP and they already shoot. That's pretty sweet. Okay, Delhi main coming up, baby. We're back to Delhi. Make way for Fitz, bro. English. Landmarks, buildings, trading, and technology. Abbey of King's Landmark. Yes, so we've seen this. If you saw my pup review, you can now crown a king, a cavalry unit with a lesser version of the Abbey's aura. There's its cost. Only one king may be trained at a time, and it heals uh, units outside of combat for 2 HP per second. I found it difficult to use when I tried to, to, to use this king. Um, maybe higher APM players might find value out of it. I still find it's pretty nice to be able to have that council hall, but I don't know. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this gets used. Uh, the resource value of the Abbey Kings. Yeah, so they've changed it around. I don't know. I think council hall is still pretty good. Change from producing longbow in their text to all archery range units and technologies. So you can get crossbows out of the council hall, essentially. Um, and then fixed council hall hotkeys do not respect archery range key bindings. King's Palace Landmark is getting HP buff by quite a bit. Uh, pretty crazy there. Uh, the White Tower Landmark uh, now trains units, research technology, and builds and placements 100% faster. It's a buff for it. The Berkshire La Palace Landmark HP increased. Uh, the uh, uh, effect change from projectiles have plus 50 range and double the amount of base arrows to all projectiles and have 15 tiles range. Arrows now in deal incendiary and deal increased damage. Okay, so they've buffed this landmark kind of across the board here. Um, so they kind of want you to choose between the, uh, the Wingard Palace and the, uh, uh, the Berkshire. It looks like what they said. 
Okay, now they added all these new units. Uh, they changed how the uh, Wingard Palace uh, trains uh, these armies. They've got these different things here. And the biggest thing you're going to notice is Wingard Raiders and there's Wingard Rangers. Now, if you wonder what these units look like, check out my YouTube short uh, tab and you can find me demonstrating these units versus the new elephant. So go check that out. Um, but since these are like long range longbows, longer range longbows, super longbows. Um, and these are kind of like a special man at arms type unit. Uh, so go check them out. It's pretty cool. English skin, some new units, skin some new love. Lots of players play English. Lots of people love English. Should be a nice new fun for you. Wingard footman. Yeah, there you go. Train time decrease. Uh, it's where Winger, Footman, and King could not be selected with military shortcuts. Yeah, they changed that. Okay, so uh, there you have it. Enclosures gold generation time increased from 3.5 seconds to 5 seconds. So this was a nerf to enclosures, that gold generation speed. And uh, they did nerf the network of castles and citadels uh, from 20% to 15 and then 40 to 30 respectively. So... Um, some nerf to that, which is hit English pretty big. Nerf to enclosures. Some new unit choices. Some new landmark choices. The king, they get a king. Lots of stuff for them. Okay, so English changes. Let me know what you think about those. French landmark and tech. Chamber of Commerce landmark. It no longer provides additional resources to traders, but it automatically trains a trader for each. Uh, you get a free trader for each economic tech research. So if you build the Chamber of Commerce, okay, and then you research Wheelbarrow, it queues up one trader and it slowly trains it. And it, it doesn't instantly spawn it. it. It'll queue it up. Okay, so you might queue up three if you get te three techs done at the same time or something like that, just so you understand. Um, so Chamber of Commerce gives you a free trader for each tech you research. So get them all, just like Daily, right? They're already cheaper anyways. College of Artillery, uh... Is bonus damage increased 20 to 30 percent? So, this is a buff for the College of Artillery. So, French Main should enjoy this quite a bit. Uh, it works 50 percent faster, can research the, some of the technologies. Um, and there's this new thing artillery shot loads the cannon for an artillery shot next to sh next shot has greatly increased area of effect, but no bonus damage against building. So, this will be good using the artillery shot versus clumps of units. It's gonna be kind of cool, kind of like maybe like a bombard or something. Red Palace now activates an Arbalist weapon on all keeps and town centers. Your town centers own an Arbalist weapon once you get the Red Palace. Pretty crazy, right? Naval Hulk range. They got a little buff. Three to four. Remember when the Hulk was just terrorizing the ladder before we had... <laughs> that was just like all used all on water maps. Okay, there you go. French. Some of the fun little changes there. I think buffs pretty much across the board. I don't think there's any nerfs there. So yeah, some nice buffs for French. Going on, Holy Roman Empire. Landmarks, buildings, and landmark. Oh, and more. Minework Palace. Now they got some changes here. They now have two technologies unique. Riveted Chainmail gives spearmen and horsemen plus two melee armor. Costs 75 food and 175 gold. Guys, this is crazy. You can get this in this what in the second age? Plus two melee armor? That's cracked. That's crazy. Riveted chainmail removed from the barracks. So there you go, guys. That's going to be... That's pretty crazy. Steel barding. Knights gain plus two armor. Okay. Plus two armor and cost 200 food and 500 gold. So two unique techs here now for the Holy Roman Empire for some armor. And uh, looks like they fixed some bugs. That's pretty much it. That's it. If you're playing HRA, that's all you need to know. That mind work palace change is uh, the biggest thing we're going to see here. Going on to the Malians. You know, I've played my fair share of them. Let's see what they've got. Mounds of Quarry no longer displays as a resource production unit. Frimba Garrison and Fort of the Hunter's name mark. The size is decreased, so it's only going to take up 4.4 grid. Frimba Garrison. Did they nerf it? Fix an issue with the javelin throwers. Archers upgraded. Could take up more population than intended. Oh. Where archers couldn't be further upgraded. Landmark. Gold. Re okay, there it is, guys. The Frimba nerf you've all wanted. Gold reduction bonus. Reduce from 20% to 10%. So, trade got nerfed 10%, which is a big thing Malians like to do. And the gold reduction on the Frimba, instead of being 20%, is now 10%. So, those are some two, two nerfs for, for, for the Malians. Certainly going to hit them. Fort of the Hunter's Landmark. Fix the issue with the Fort of the Hunter's Preferred Rams. Okay. Griabara. Tool tip. Okay. Add some extra tool tips. About the read the yeah if you guys didn't know this add a missing bonus describes malian's ability to reduce research times 
of future text based on successful trades from traders. So a lot of people don't know about this. That is a little thing for them. Um, oh, house has got a buff though from 400 health to 100 health. Okay. Um, so that's a that's a little buff for them. Uh, local knowledge tech move from imperial to castle age. Cost reduced from 200 to 500, 150. Okay, All the cost change for that. No longer spies the arrow slits, the manuscript trade. Okay, now applies to the boiling oil technology. Um, okay, and then unit changes. Okay, what did they do to the units? So, had a little bit of eco changes, that's for sure. Let's see what we got here. So, Musafani Warriors. I'm getting hot just thinking about all these changes. Damage decreased in the feudal age from 9 to 8. Nerfed. Bonus damage increased from 9 to 10. Buff against the unit you're good against. Damage increased in the castle age 12 to 9. Decreased. Wow, that's quite a, a nerf. I think they might have officially killed the moose party. <laughs> I'm, I'm solely responsible for these nerfs. Bonus damage increased from 12 to 15. So they'll be more effective against armor. Just not going to kill everything like they were before. Damage decreased in Imperial Age. The bonus damage is up. So bonus damage down, or base damage down, bonus damage up. So you're just not going to be able to use it as a generalist. So I'm not sure that my, my Moose Fadi spam strategy would work quite effectively as it, as it has. And not surprising. This is a change I think need to have. As someone who's played a lot of aliens, I'll, t I'll say it when I, when, I, when I see it. Like, they were crazy. They were stupid strong. So um, the problem is they don't have a whole lot of other stuff in their arsenal. They do and they don't. So this could, like, could shift their balance so quickly. So we're going to have to keep an eye out on the Malians here. Health regeneration increased to 2 HP per second starting in the Feudal Age. Increased. Is that only when stealth, though? Wait, is that... Did they add stealth? Health regeneration per second. I don't think they healed before. Of, uh... I'll have to double check on that one. Are they just saying that now they're just going to get... They'll just regenerate health? Not entirely sure. Interesting. Uh, and... Yeah, enemy buildings Gaia no longer reveal units in stealth. So that's going to be pretty big. Okay, naval. Coastal navigation, move speed, duration increase from 10 to 25 seconds. Hunting parties. Naval tech now gives arrow ships plus 20 bonus damage when attacking fire ships. Yeah. How about that? Okay, Malian changes. Some bu some buffs, kind of. I, I, I'm sorry, some nerfs. I think they got some nerfs pretty much across the board there, with the exception of the house. So let me know if it's what you're expecting. The Mongols. Please tell me they're doing something about Mongolian trade. I guess trade has been, has been nerfed 10%, but... Cruel Titan no longer requires the con. Yeah, we already knew this. This will be probably similar to what we saw on the uh, pup. Damage buff applies to bonus damage. Yes. Uh, Aura increased from 7.5 to 10. So Krulatai getting a buff. Cognate Palace. It now gives you this uh, random assortment of units. Uh, a random army from across the Mongolian Empire. This trebuchet is so freaking amazing. Uh, but uh, yeah. So those are all the different units you can get from the Cognate Palace. It's way different than what from was before. If you didn't see it on the pup, uh, you're going to have to check this out. It's pretty cool. Um, the Cognate Palace. Mongol Silver Tree. Fixed issue where it does not correctly follow hockey binds. Increased. Okay, here it is. Silver Tree nerf. Increased double trader production cost on Silver Tree from 90 increase. I don't know if it's a decrease to 120. Okay, so they're going to be more expensive. So their traders are a little more expensive and bring you back 10% less. So nice little change there. Uh, a stupa now contains Uvu technologies. Uh, fix some tool tips and some other general things. Uh, select all military will no longer select a packed up Mongol prayer tent. Good to know. Mangadai. I didn't see Mangadai as being a major problem, but it looks like they decreased their movement speed. They already felt pricey to me. Damage decreased as well. Huh. I can imagine there's probably certain lobbies uh, where Mangadai are extraordinarily impactful, but I, I don't feel like I see a ton of them uh, in Conqueror. Uh, now attacks faster, attack speed 1.25 to 0.88. You know it's teak to be less effective in large team games. So 
Uh, uh, people were doing drive-by with Manga Dies in Wrecking Ecos. Apparently it was happening. So, uh, let's get an F in chat for the Manga Die guys. Pour one out. Looks like he's getting a, a, a pretty, pretty big nerf there. Signal arrow changes. The range has been increased. The whistling arrow, arrow cost has been reduced. Whistling arrow reduced, cost reduced. Okay, so some buffs kind of that are landmarks or change the landmarks, but I'd say the biggest thing is that they got trade nerfed and their man manga die nerfed would be the biggest nerfs that they have there. So there's our changes there for the uh for the Mongols. Okay. And they fixed a bug, I guess, with spearmen were doing additional damage. Ottomans, the auto wins, landmarks, buildings, and techs. Fix the twin minaret madras landmark sometimes trapping units in the bushes. No more getting trapped in berry bushes. How about that? The Mehmet Imperial Armory can now be toggled to produce battering rams. Just say like everyone else can make them now. Cool. Istanbul Imperial Palace landmark. Uh, apparently it could stack <laughs> when killed and repaired. Now it can't. Pretty funny. I never saw that. But uh, Seagate. Uh, fix an issue where traders could not garrison. No longer lose its ability to buff traders when another landmark is destroyed. Ah, oh, sounds like some, some bugs they fixed. Incendiary Arrow. Um... It looks like they just kind of fixed some stuff going on. It seems like there's always something going on with Incendiary Arrow. I don't know what the what the code is behind the scenes on that bad boy. Uh, they changed some some tool tips there for the Grand Galley. It basically looks like they didn't change anything. They just fixed some bugs for Ottomans. They kind of they kept them as they are. I thought maybe Metters would get uh, less HP. Uh, yeah, it looks like just some fixes. So. There we go. Uh, Grand Galley attacks faster and attack speed is up. Uh, it looks like it increased the uh, Imperial Tech Production Speed and Move Speed bonuses to gunpowder shift increased from 15 to 20%. So really not many changes here for the Ottomans. That's probably the least changes we've seen out of any of these civs. On to the Rus. Landmark buildings and technologies. Let's pay attention because there was some cool things with the Kremlin in the, in the pup. The Kremlin may now levy militia to the landmark town center. Okay. We knew this. This is basically you could call these out if you have the Kremlin. Uh, levy militia ability costs reduced from 100 to 40 food. Oh boy. Units spawn reduce from 6 to... Oh, you can only get 2 militia. So you should be able to get 6 militia. So basically... <laughs> I mean, people were kind of using this as an offensive uh, thing. But if you're only getting 2 militia out of this... That's a whole lot less value for a landmark. What? You get two million? Eh, I don't know. I thought there were going to be some fun Kremlin strategies, but... Uh, eh, they've already nerfed it. Now requires supplies to be used, which each levy costing one supply. So they've nerfed the Kremlin change. Is this going to be that impactful? Will you go for that? Or will you go for the Golden Gate? I don't know. I think we might see more Golden Gates, fellas. Kremlin gains plus one supply every six seconds automatically and for free now that's interesting huh so it's basically a house every 60 seconds it adds one more pop interesting so uh, uh we address this by reducing the life of militia by 10 seconds and the amount that you have this is interesting abby the trinity saints reach has been buffed Okay. Merge into one tech. They Okay, they, they change these techs around a little bit for the warrior monks. Yeah, n nothing too massive here. More HP. So yeah, warrior monks are definitely going to be uh, a little, little stronger. Their effect's going to be a little more impactful. High trade house. They look like they reverted the deer spine from 45 to 60 seconds. That'll be a nerf for them. High armory techs have been updated. Fine-tuned guns. 20% bombard speed to plus 20% damage oh yes yeah, so they get damage instead of speed now tech uh, cost has been increased add 60 bonus damage versus infantry for bombards they really want bombards doing damage to infantry we've seen a few techs kind of like this siege crew training effective instant uh pack on pack all now applies to bombards so that's pretty crazy they've they've uh they've, they've buffed their siege uh with some of these things here Wandering Town effect decreased uh, from 100% damage to 50% damage. Probably because of the other changes they made to Rams. Now also grants two healing per second in combat to Rams. I'm not sure if that two, like, two healing is going to be the difference that keeps a Ram alive. Ah, pff, healing, uh, maybe. I don't know. Interesting. 
in combat. Does it mean it won't heal while it's not in combat? Maybe. I don't know. That's if you're running away with your ram. Okay, Spaskaya Tower gets a big health increase. Uh, fix a bug where construction of this landmark granted to the siege crew training upgrade for free. Okay. Uh, Crick some tool tips. Cost reductions for Boyer's Fortitude. Health bonus to calf increased to plus 20 to plus 30. I feel like there's a lot of like little like buffs and nerfs around them. I guess the nerf is only to that new thing. Like lots of like little buffs to the roost here. Uh, Streltsy unit combat. It's possible to trigger. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, they, they nerfed sh uh, fishing in general for everyone. Same thing with the walls. You've seen the similar stuff. So interesting. Roost mains. Let me know what you think about these changes. Uh, lots of little things. Roost is not as if I play a ton. Uh, but... I was most kind of looking forward to seeing some Kremlin strategies. I'm not sure how prevalent they'll be now with that being nerfed from what it was on the pup. And I think that's everything for uh, all those sids. Let's see what we got left. Learning from public update preview. They appreciate the feedback. Here's a quick overview of some of the changes made between the pup build and now. Okay, so this will be kind of your recap. Buff water bonuses for less popular sips on those maps. So that's why you're seeing, like, I think Delhi get a water buff with their fishing boats because they're trying to encourage you to use them on water maps. Nerf uh, trade because it's too effective. Revert changes to boar pool because everyone likes the boar. Uh, Delhi feudal age compensation to make up for reduced scholar healing. I'm excited about Delhi. I'm excited about this. Reduce militia critical path strategy of going for the fast <laughs> Malian. I read this wrong. They're trying to nerf the, the, the fast castle for the Malians. Pumping out tons of reduced cost units. Um, we've heard your feedback regarding the recent changes to the hardest AI. We're working to address those concerns. Um, the plan is to revert the hardest AI to its previous implementation. Okay. Best way to adapt existing our introduction. Introduce new AI difficulty options. So the cheating hardest AI... Sounds like they've listened. They're not going to do it. So, I mean, guys, what can you ask for? Everything that the community has give, give a lot of feedback to the developers. They've said, we hear you and we're, we're going to go with your suggestions. That's freaking amazing. Like, can we, get some, can we get some poggers in the chat for the devs? They were working hard. I'm sure there's something that you don't like or something you want. Maybe it'll be there someday. Make sure you're giving that feedback because they're listening. They're listening. And uh, it's pretty cool. Um... There you go. What's on the horizon? Oh, look at that. Villager with the bundle of wood. We're celebrating all the work our villagers do. Gain villager portraits. Just what I wanted. Much of villager portraits. Okay, there you have it, guys. That's going to be, be it. That is our season four updates for Age of Empires 4 coming out in just a week from today. Sound off. Let me know what you thought about all these updates. And if you stuck around this far, Make sure you hit the subscription button so you can see my future videos. And I hope to catch you over for one of my live streams over on twitch.tv slash Fitzbro. Fitzbro, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.